What's up guys, it's Dalmatter, and today we are going to be reacting to why is Stalker so immersive? So I'm guessing Stalker is a video game, Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl, okay? So it's a game I've never played, and this is by Custer Plays, who is a channel I've never reacted to, but I was asked to check this video out. Um, this is actually a relatively small channel and a not very viewed video, uh, so not sure how much interaction this is going to get, but, you know, I wanted to check it out, it seems like an interesting concept. Uh, and somebody had asked me to, so let's do it. So, uh, you know, I don't know how this is going to go, but he has 65,000 subs, so go give him a sub if you haven't seen his stuff before. This video only has 3.5k views, so, uh, yeah, pretty small video, but let's uh, check it out anyway. Anyway, link to the original video down below, and let's go. Why is Stalker so immersive? And why is Stalker 2 such a big deal? Surprisingly for a lot of people, the Stalker franchise is almost unknown to them. And that is mostly- Yeah, one of the first things I said in this video, I've never heard of this game, never heard of the franchise. Um, so far, it's kind of given me like, it, it, like the look of the gameplay looks quite similar to Call of Duty, but obviously the vibes are quite different. Due to the fact that the last Stalker game, Call of Pripyat, came out 12 years ago. So what makes the Stalker franchise so immersive and unique? And why is Stalker 2 such a big deal? What it's makes Stalker ghosts, such yeah. a cult following franchise for so many players out there who even after such a long time still play it and mod it on a daily basis? While Stalker can be described as an open world survivor horror FPS game, it also borrows some RPG elements like deep upgrade mechanics, weapon repairs and maintenance and a rather intense inventory management with a weight system that can be seen even today in games like Escape from Tarkov. And while all of this makes for- Yeah, that system right there, right here. Oh, wait. Weapon repairs and maintenance. Yeah, this reminds me of- Oh, I can't remember the name of the game. Well, one buddy plays it all the time, though. It's a survival game. Uh, not Rust. I think Rust has a system similar to this, too. I think Resident Evil 5 had a system similar to this as well. Where you have, like- you know, certain things that take up a certain amount of space. So you have like the space and weight system. Honestly, one of the more realistic systems when it comes to like storing stuff in games. And a rather intense inventory management with a weight system that can be seen even today in games like Escape from Tarkov. And while all of this makes for an incredible and unique experience, the thing that makes Stalker so different and so outstanding compared to the other games is the deep connection you have with the world around you, or the zone per se. And to this day, 12 years later, it is still unmatched. Now I do want to give credit for Porgy for letting me use his footage, really appreciate. You see, in Stalker, everyone has a different experience. The world around you is in constant change and mutation. The relationship you forge, the alliances you build, the world events that you see happening are in constant change. Stalker takes place in an alternative universe where the Chernobyl power plant disaster emits levels of radiation so high that deeply changes the environment and with it creates dangerous creatures and mutants alike. It is a true Fucking epilepsy warning, holy shit. And at this point you might ask yourself, well, why will people willingly go to the zone if it's so dangerous? And that's because the disaster that ruined this part of the world also gave to the creation of artifacts. These artifacts, when equipped by the player, will give a plethora of different buffs that will make you stronger to bullet damage, give you higher stamina and regeneration levels, amongst many others. And filing and acquiring these artifacts was very important for your experience, as stamina is not plentiful in Stalker, especially if you have a full inventory. And if there's one thing you don't want to experience, is running out of stamina deep in the night with mutants laying around. But while you could say that using these artifacts could be seen as cheats, they will also give you radiation sickness, for which you have to find other artifacts to level it. And all of this makes for an incredible balance as the game forces you to make tough choices. Tough choices are the name of the game in Stalker. So many times I had to choose between saving fellow stalkers, getting attacked by mutants during the night, or realizing I don't have enough ammo and that it's too risky. Only to come. So is this a multiplayer game? 
That's kind of like the saving the fellow stalkers. I feel like that kind of implies a multiplayer aspect, or is it just NPCs that you're saving? Come back the following morning and see the dead stalker body is shredded to pieces. And this NPCs. is a daily occurrence in the zone, as different stalker groups and factions go about their lives with complete disregard to their self. The zone exists and evolves without concern for the player. Factions fight you, each other, they fight animals and mutants, and stumbling across battles that have nothing to do with you is common. Actions affect reputations, which plays an important part in forming allegiances and causing rivalries. It's a constantly evolving playground that always surprises. Regarding factions, there's a plethora of them, and we just got confirmation that Freedom and Beauty factions will be making an appearance on Stalker 2. Freedom is a clan of stalkers who fight for free access to the zone, and their views are somewhat anarchistic, believing nobody can own the zone, and seeing it as both of a scientific marvel and as a free life inside the zone borders. In contrast with this, there is the Beauty faction. Beauty was founded by former military expedition survivors and stalker concerns about the looming horrors of the zone. They have a strict military code and operate in a military fashion. Their goal is to So, obviously this game's not very realistic because <laughs> you got fucking Antifa fighting the military. <laughs> I feel like I know who would win that in real life. <laughs> you guys can't even build a fucking garden. To contain and destroy the zone, fearing that it will spread to the outside world. They view the zone as an ulcer to the world and their efforts are a way to excise it. And they do this with blunt force by killing mutants, eliminating all those who oppose them. And all of these different factions, for which have barely scratched the surface, make you feel like you're just another piece of the puzzle. You are not special. This core design philosophy of complete and total indifference towards the player affords for very satisfying gameplay mechanics, which is complemented by diversified gunplay with realistic ballistic models. Granted, the guns are hardly accurate and sometimes very annoying to use. The abundance of items and gear along with the phenomenal sound design, a day-night and a dynamic weather cycle makes for an unparalleled sense of atmosphere of a dread and isolated place, for which Stalker took full advantage and implemented it wonderfully. Hey you! Yes! Hey you! Yeah, yeah so that's, that's honestly an interesting concept. Um, now the one thing I have a question of is like the, the, I'm guessing there's no multiplayer because guns jamming in a multiplayer game would be so annoying and he was he was talking about that right there where he said you know the guns are really like the, the guns can be really annoying I'm assuming he's talking about the jamming because I know in multiplayer games there's some multiplayer games that had that as like a thing and they were so annoying because you'd get into a gun battle and you'd literally die from RNG because you're fucking gun jammed like. I feel like when you have multiplayer games, you need it needs to be as balanced as possible. And this is one of the biggest problems with games is like multiple options for different stuff. Is yeah, it just makes certain things like unusable and certain things mandatory to use. Once you realize you are simply a trespasser of the zone, but are not a reason of its existence, you will know there is no other gaming experience like it. Stalker is plainly put a brilliant testimony to exemplary game design. It almost makes you have to mentally prepare yourself to head off from safety only to get a sight of relief once you make it back from an expedition. And this feeling of fear of the unknown, the sweatiness on your hands when passing through the zone, the constant mutant noise around you, the intense atmosphere the hell is that? for a truly immersive experience. You embrace being miserable. It is so refreshing to see a game where you're not the big boss around, you are not the strongest around. You are just a miserable dude in the middle of a lot of miserable dudes in a miserable is that thing? with miserable weathers and miserable guns. So at this point there should be no surprise as why Stalker 2 coming out so many years later is such a big deal. Simply put, the gaming industry needs Stalker. Now this does not come without concerns. As we know, holding a game to high expectations usually ends up backfiring when the game comes out, and I don't expect Stalker 2 to be super polished right off the bat. Honestly, if this game is balanced, it's not the Stalker I know. <laughs> if it's balanced, it's not the Stalker I know. I mean, that's fair. I, I, again, gaming balance is like almost impossible unless you literally just narrow down the amount of things people can do. 
Um, and yet, same with, like, people have to temper their expectations with a lot of games. I feel like that's a big problem in the gaming industry nowadays um, on the fan side of things is people think, like, the next big game that's going to come out is going to be, like, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Like, they'll have these insanely unrealistic expectations. And part of that the problem with that is that it's sold to them by that as the developers or at least the marketing team. And then it comes out and it's just, you know, it's okay. But when you're expect like, even if, you, you know, even if it's, like, a good game, but your expectations were that it had to be up here, well, then all of a sudden people just trash on it. Like, a good example of this is, like, Halo, f or not Halo 4, uh, Fortnite 4, Fortnite 4, Fallout 4, I'm mixing up all these F games. Um, but Fallout 4, Fallout 4 is a good game. I'd even go as far as to say it's a great game. But people expected it to be, like, a billion times better than Halo 3 and Halo... I keep saying Halo... People expect it to be a billion times better than um, than Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. And it was just kind of a, you know, it, it's better in some ways, worse in some ways. But it's still a great game, but people just kind of shit on it because their expectations were, like, so through the roof. And then it came out and it didn't meet those expectations. What I do expect is a game like no other. Nowadays, in pretty much every single game out there, you are always the shot caller. You are always the strongest dude around. I think the fact that in Stalker, you are just Mr. Nobody, is what really draws people in to the sense of being nothing special. It is really immersive in those regards since you feel like an actual human being and not a killing machine. The regular trips to the spawn menu also contributed to this. There were plenty of them. In Stalker, the quick save button really is your best friend. It's pretty much manufactured suffering, and I love it. And all of these reasons makes for an incredible immersive experience, at least the way I see it. There really is nothing quite like it, and if you have never played Stalker before, I recommend you to play it at least once and to put some time into it. Granted, it has not aged well, the combat is very clunky, and bugs are frequent. The beginning parts of Stalker can be a bit slow, but once you delve deep into the zone, and start to figure things out, that's when you know that you know nothing. Thanks so much for listening guys, I hope you had a good time here with me today. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, as that really helps out the channel, and I would greatly appreciate it. But that's all for today, I'll see you guys on the next one, until then, have a good one, Kasser Plays checking out. Alright, yeah. Oh, that was a pretty good video. Um, I'm surprised this guy has such a small channel. But uh, that's definitely a game I'd be interested in checking out. I'm going to check Steam real quick and see if it's on Steam. I'm assuming it's on Steam. Uh, let's see here. Go to the store. Alright, so... Oh, yeah. This is Shadow of Chernobyl and Heart of Chernobyl. Okay, so it's $7 for the first one. 80 bucks for the second one. Um... Yeah, very positive, very positive. Friends already have it. Who has it? Oh, Zosa and Nori. Okay. Yeah, might have to check this game out. Seems really interesting. Um, so yeah, from 2007. So yeah, we're talking about a game now that is... This video is a year old. He said the game was a decade old, but <laughs> it was almost 15 years old by the time he released this video. I mean, depending on when he did release this video, it might have already been 15 years old. Um... But yeah, that's definitely an interesting concept. I, and I liked a lot what he was saying about just gaming in general. I tend to agree with a lot of those points. People need to temper their expectations when it comes to a lot of games, uh, especially AAA games. I think a big problem, you know, that's one of the big problems with AAA companies nowadays is the delusion that people have when these games come out. But anyway, yeah, great video. Uh, so this is from Custer Plays. Link to the original video down below. Be sure to check him out. He's a small channel. Well, bigger than me, but I, I keep calling, referring to these people as small channels, but they're all bigger than me. Uh, but, you know, 60,000 subs is a relatively small channel. Be sure to check him out. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think below, and I'll see you in the next one.